Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. Yes, it's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, I've made a few changes to the, the, the series, and uh, we're going to demonstrate this here in a second. And I'm doing this for, you know, recording purposes. Uh, there have been things I've wanted to do in this game. Uh, I'm starting to realize that they won't be able to really be feasible with the, the current game mechanics. One, blocks are destructible. And two, so is the ground. In this case, it is not. I have disabled uh, voxel destruction. Apparently we can still take down trees, but that's fine. And block damage, I have disabled that. And that's only for this world. There is going to be different types of builds I want to... I want to have, like, block destruction. Like, I do want to go play with the pirates one of these days, show them my toys and my guns. And, you know, at the same time, too, I do want to do some sort of, like, terrain adjustment and modification and stuff like that. But uh, one of the main reasons why I did this is for, like, the first actual big build I tried to do, and that was the big spider on Mars, and needless to say, the ground did not hold, handle it. So that's why I have disabled that, just for now, because there, uh, there are some big projects I want to do that require the ground being able to withstand a couple hundred or even a couple thousand tons, if, if need be. Uh, also, too, as far as some of the bigger builds that I've, uh, I've talked about, like uh, doing Red Dwarf and Atlantis, I have decided that I will be making both those builds their own side series. So one's going to be Space Engineers Atlantis, and one's going to be Space Engineers Red Dwarf. Uh, Space Engineers Atlantis is going to be a go. Uh, hopefully I'll have a video up or, or two up in the next week or so. Uh, I've been able to find enough, more than enough information on the actual build, and I've heard it's anywhere between 16 and... 58 square kilometers in size, which isn't bad. Uh, I'll show you another interesting little tip I've discovered with my uh, creative powers. And then the other one is going to be Red Dwarf. Uh, the problem with Red Dwarf is I cannot find anything really as far as like schematics and blueprints and stuff like that. Now that's a, a big ship. If you haven't seen the series, Red Dwarf is a mining ship that is, from what I've seen, is actually built around an asteroid. The ship is 10 kilometers long, 6 kilometers wide, or, and 5 kilometers high, or 5 kilometers wide, 6 kilometers high. Either way, it is a big ship. It is 2,000 floors, and it. I'm not really looking for, like, total blueprints. I just want to try to get, like, key locations of main parts of the actual series. Preferably Season 8, where we have, like, the tank and... Uh, different cargo hangers and stuff like that, just to, so I can get a rough idea of how to set it up. But another thing I've done is uh, I've been exploring, like I said, my creative powers. Now, building is going to be a lot, like, unbelievably easier now. Because I've seen this before, I've never actually used it, but you can actually click. Oh, hang on, why is this not working? Oh, yeah, you have to be on a grid. But... If I were to build off a grid, right now I'm set to plane mode. I can make this plane as big as I want. Like, there is absolutely no limit to how big I can build in one single spot. Now, not only can I do that, but I can also... I, I'm going to change it to, to line mode. It'll just make it a little bit easier. But we have Control-C, and we have Control... And then we have... Oh yeah, automatically places, and I can do Control V and get another one. I can rotate it like like so. Hang on, and that's the best thing is it snaps right to an existing grid and merges. And then I can always copy that and then rotate that somehow. Let's place it on here somewhere. Let's go stupid with this, uh, like this so, and then we'll copy it again and make this obscenely massive tower. I'm gonna have to back up for this. Just because it's already, what do we add here? This is going to make almost 12,000 blocks in seconds. Now, some of you have seen some of my builds, so you know I'm going to be able to achieve some amazing stuff. So there we go, we've got 12,000 blocks. Oh, this one is actually free. And it's gone, just like that. Control X, gotta love it. 
So yeah, that is what I have done. Uh, this is just gonna, like I said, gonna make things so much easier to go bigger and badder and far greater. But for today, I have a project, and like I said, we are gonna go back to Mars, and we're gonna hop back into our free flight mode, and we're gonna head back out here, we're gonna zoom out a little bit, or speed up a little bit, and then we'll, we're gonna find a nice little spot on Europa here. Now I chose Europa for two reasons. One, the low gravity, and two, it seems to be the flattest of most areas. Okay, so now I can just build on a line. I don't actually do a plane anymore. Oh, you're still on a plane. What's going on here? Okay, hang on. I gotta fix that. I think I hit cancel by mistake. There we go. So this makes it, makes it so much easier for building like super long towers and I gotta rebind my down key there we go get right above it actually I should put a GPS marker down here because I want to get this thing big so uh, let me get a pill it up to the top where we're gonna start and I'll bring you back okay so I decided to try to go 300 meters and that seems a, a fair height I know it's a thousand feet uh, you're talking about me here uh, here we are so I've been trying to figure out uh, sort of like how, how how far apart I want the legs spaced. Uh, the legs I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing a little differently than the first two spiders that I've done so far in the, in this game. I'll do it like I did in Planet Nomads, where I have basic I'm making basically U joints. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna go ahead and choose a color, and I've been thinking about what color I want to use. And yes, we're gonna use the clean armor. Thank you, Keen, for that. Um, I was almost thinking like a sort of like a dark gray. Let's choose a gray and see if we can get sort of dark. And I was thinking about almost like a light blue accent on it, like icicles on the back. All right, so we'll go with this. Now, I was thinking because the the U joints could be seven blocks par seven blocks wide, and I was gonna have eleven blocks in between. The outside of the U joint, so 17 blocks between the legs. So we could probably go 15 here. I think that might work. So I'll just do 7 across this way. Okay, that should be right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Nope, that wasn't right. Didn't count 7 for some reason. Let's try this again. counts the, the root block. Alright, so we'll do that. So then, it's going to be 8 legs, and 11 apart, with 3, so 17. Hold on, doing math here. Oh, this ain't going to work. Give me a second. Okay, so I decided to go uh, 7 blocks between. I started to realize that, considering the, blocks only, the legs are only going to be one block, that it might... Uh, look a little too stringy. So from here, I'm gonna go until it reaches seven. So it'll be fourteen. And that's including the legs. So fourteen times three is forty-two. So we just go down here. Yes, I did rebind uh, my down key to control. So that's actually what I'm used to. And I'll go till this says forty-three. Okay. So if we go down here, I should be able to get thirteen. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let me do the rest. Okay, so here I have the frame. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the space we're going to be. Basically, at the end of these is where these U joints are going to be. And how do I want to do this? I think. I'm trying to figure out if I want to have the horizontal vertical axis first. Probably make more, make more sense to have the horizontal first. So I have been messing around the merge blocks a little bit. Let me uh, get this in. And I have discovered a few things. So we're going to need uh, three blocks in the middle for the axle, then the rotor, then another block. And that works. My mouse is completely worn out, and I have yet to buy another one. It uh, doesn't really matter which rotors I use, so we're going to place one there. Then we do the same on the other side here. Uh, 
Uh, two, yes, and then one. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five blocks in between. And yes, we got that there. Now this is where things get interesting with these rotors. Uh, first, oh, oh, that's why I can't use control. Ha ha ha! I gotta rebuy my key. Yeah, I forgot. Build vision requires the control key. Oh, hang on, I hit the wrong button again. Oh, that's better. I don't know why I keep hitting cancel instead of okay. Maybe because it's on the right. So yeah. Anyways, I gotta go ahead and lock these. Okay, lock that one. And I'm do gonna do the first one on camera. Oh yeah, control. First one on camera, so you can actually see how I'm doing this. And basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join these up, having their own, uh, basically an axle. Oh yeah, we gotta first you gotta lock the rotor before you put any blocks on it, or it will move. You don't want that. Uh, what do we want? Displacement. You want to bring it back as far as you need to, 0.3 or something like that. I'll do the same on the other side here. Uh, let me get that out of my face so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, displacement, yes. Bring that back. I could go a little more. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers we need for this. Uh, and we're also going to need merge blocks. Because this is where it comes in handy. We'll need jazz groups, but not right now. We'll use those later. Alright, shift, get out of there. So, we had one block here, one block here. Now, if I place another block in here, it's only going to join to one side. So, what I do, uh, first, got to get a power source on here. Just realize that. Uh, because I do plan on purposing this, well, repurposing this as a base, yes, I will do something like that. I'm going to put a large reactor on here just so we have the power. We have the power. Uh, yeah, don't mind me. One, two, three, four. centered just because okay so now if I go in here uh, let's go and get that out turn my light on so I can actually see what I'm doing here all right where is that rotor oh, I don't see where the marker is but I want to rotate it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it to 90 degrees uh, let's see no no don't adjust that you want to set that to Oh god. Yeah, sometimes it's easier in a terminal. Sometimes it's easier to do it this way. Okay, and then uh, upper limit will just do this up to 90. I think you can get away with a 45, but just because. Alright, then we'll uh, velocity that up to 0.6 just to move it, unlock it, and then while it's doing that, we're going to stick a merge block on here. But we're going to make sure that those things are facing that way. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on here. Once I get down here. And we're just going to make sure that's the other way. So then, so now all we have to do is just really move those two together a little bit. And we'll bring the displacement on this one back a little bit. Just until it's close enough. I don't know if it really matters too much. I know there is some play in these. All right, and then once that's done, you go ahead and reverse it. And it will actually join that thing. You can take the merge blocks out, and you have a solid axle. Yes, the velocity could be turned up a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, you just have to keep in mind when you're moving this joint here that one of them is going to be opposite than the other. So one would be a positive rotation, the other one would be a negative rotation to go in the same direction. And then once you have those set up, you have a solid connection. And that's what I plan on doing. And then on this one here, what's going to be another U-joint coming up? Actually, let's go ahead and just in case anything goes wrong, and I'm saying that now and something's going to go wrong just because it happened last time. And let's got to make sure too that I don't have a block in your hand because you're changing it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. But this one is going to be going this way. With one block, not two. And I hit that control for some reason. I don't know why. Habit. Like so. And then that's going to be the same process here. And that's going to be our U-joint. And then I'm going to do that on the, uh, the rest of the sides. 
Uh, what I will have to do too, I gotta remember to do this right now. I'm gonna have to put some terminals or control panels or something because I have to make sure I pair these. So these two get paired, these two get paired, and then on the next set, this, those two would get paired, those two would get paired. So it is a little bit of a setup work, but it needs to be done. So uh, let me get the rest of these set up and I'll bring you back. Okay, so there we go. I have all 32 all set up and paired up and believe me, it was not an easy task. Uh, needless to say, I did put it off for a couple of days. Uh, that's why I'm always late with my videos. I try to take on these things and I just don't have the motivation to do them sometimes. But anyways, uh, I'll just quickly show you here the, the rat's nest of rotors in here. These are all the groups. We have left one horizontal that's this particular leg here left one horizontal left one vertical left two horizontal left two vertical and so on and so forth and each one is two rotors somewhere in this mess uh, the next challenge that's going to be with uh, setting these up is getting them go in the right direction because if we look at it uh, you don't actually see the marker but as you can see the numbers go greater as you go clockwise if you go up top the numbers are actually going to go down as you go clockwise because the road is reversed. So what I have to do is I have to make sure that I have the the limit set properly. So if this is at zero right now, it's going to be like zero and negative ten, while the one at the bottom is going to be zero and plus ten. And then I have to make sure I have the velocity reversed on the bottom one as I do on the top one, and so on and so forth. But we'll get into that shortly. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I actually forgot to set the braking force on all these. Unfortunately, when I want to do a global thing, something like braking force or torque, I can do it all at one shot. I don't have to worry about velocities changing. It says negative three, but if I go and change this, it's going to change every single one, even the ones that have to go in the opposite direction. Same with limits and all that stuff. So that is a bit of a challenge. But now, now it's to get the legs on here before I start actually setting everything up. And from my previous builds, the the limits seem to be about the same, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build one leg. And we're only going to build one leg because I can copy and paste, and we're going to do it that way. Now, I do want to have a bit of a, a body around this, sort of like a shell covering up the hinges if I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out with uh, probably about five blocks. Uh, that's the problem with the... Um, me setting to build the plane or on lines or planes with my mouse sticks and it kind of does stuff like this. It draws more than I want. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll cut it off there, I think. Because I want to have room for rotation. I like to have the 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 shell or the body end about here, but high enough so the leg has room to move and at the same time make sure nothing clips. So yeah, we'll go with five just because we got the whole moon to work with, so it's not that big of a deal. So then we just start going up, and this is going to be kind of time consuming while I get a leg set up. So I'm going to do this off camera, and I'll bring you back when it's time to uh, add more legs to our gigantic legged friend. Okay, so there's the first leg. I'm starting to realize I either built this too high or I didn't build it big enough but uh, we're about uh, about halfway down about 150 meters so it's still a couple hundred feet up and it says 250 because I'm off on an angle here if I go here it's about it's about 140 meters which is still a lot better than the, the white widow uh, there is the leg so this is what I'm gonna go with uh, it's kinda looking a little stringy but hey it's a giant mechanical spider what do you expect now I gotta do one thing here and let's just do a backup save just in case. So now we're going to go ahead and cut the limb off. We're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to control C that. Okay, and then uh, get that out of my hand because I don't actually need that right now. We're going to go ahead and delete this. Oops. That was Z, not control Z. And don't worry, I got block damage off, so nothing will happen. Oh, okay, it is going to tip over. I wasn't sure if it was going to or not. All right, let's get this out of the way. Yes. And now we go ahead and paste. Now, what I have to do is, because I actually took one block off, is I have to have one block on. So then I place it right on here. In theory, anyways. Let's actually go ahead and test that. 
So if I go control V. Oh, I have to line it right up, do I? Oh, wow. This will be interesting. Let's see if I can actually do this. And I might have to load up because I should have. Shit grabbed it from the end. Give me a break, man. This is the first time trying to copy and paste like this. See, I have no way of knowing if it's going to connect to that. And it's not going to. All right. Reload. Okay, let's do this differently. So I'm going to take that block out. And then... Maybe I'll wait till it actually falls before I control C because I got to make sure I get that block there because that's going to be my connection point. And I think that's how this works. Fortunately, nothing will break. Oh, it actually hit the, the post this time. Good thing I got block damage off. Okay, good. I want to make sure I actually get the leg and not anything else. All right, so we'll go ahead and control C. There we go. That's what I want. Okay, we can get that out. We'll get rid of this. Okay, now back up we go. So we go ahead and place the block back there. One block, not three. And then we do Control V. Oh, you're not letting me do it. Why? It will not let me snap right there. Oh, this is not what I was hoping for. Hmm. If I go and place it, it does that. Hmm. Let's try this again. Maybe I gotta be on this side. I have no idea. Oh, that looks more promising. You know, let me snap on there. Aha! That's how we do it. Okay, so it sort of orientates according to the way you're actually looking. I gotcha. Learning is fun. Especially when you find ways of doing things that save you hours of time. Well, not necessarily an hour, but yeah, I guess well, it gets took me about five minutes to make that thing. It took me about five minutes to figure out how to do a copy and paste. And then we do control V. Oh, did you do this again? Why? Oh, because, yes, because I cut that one. That's right. That's quite the bounce there. Is it gone? I have no idea. Let's see if I can copy it on the fly. Aha, gotcha. All right, we'll leave that one be. I'm gonna put the rest of them, these on. Now it should work. I do believe. Okay, which way is it going? Yes. All right. Control V, rotate. Okay, I just gotta make sure it's going the right way. It's not. There we go. There's two. I'll meet you back when I've got all eight. And there we have eight legs. Now it's they do kind of look compact a little bit, and that's because I have, still have to set them. Uh, the, the front legs and the back legs are going to be 
sort of start at like a two degree position and then that way it leaves a little more room for these so we're going to get to that pretty quick here uh what i do have to do is start setting like limits and stuff like this and this is where things a get confusing but b can be simplified by um build vision here so what i need to do basically is i got to go ahead and set the limits by looking at each and every single one of these so if i look at here this is going to be like i said this is going to be a positive and this one's going to be a negative so what i do here is i uh got to go into here and so this could be a negative. Let's uh, trying to think here how far I want to get this to go. I think the lower limit will be nope. The lower limit will be negative two, and then the upper limit will probably go. I'll probably go negative ten. And if you do use this, and this is something I keep forgetting about. Oh yeah, upper limit will be two. Uh, if you hold shift or control, that you get more uh, movement on this uh, in here. You know what I mean? Like if you hold hold shift to the mouse wheel, it does five increments at a time instead of one. All right, so that one, you know what I mean. But anyway, so uh, that's enough around. Let's get back to what I'm doing here. So it's going to be negative twelve and negative two. The velocity is going to be a negative, so we'll leave that here. We'll actually bring that up. I held, held shift when I did that. I'll uh, set these all to half RPM right now. Uh, this is where things will get time consuming, so I'm not going to be doing this on camera. I'm just going to be showing you what I'm doing here. So this one I haven't set yet. So the lower limit is going to be 2, and the upper limit is going to be 12. And that's just because this one is technically rotating in a positive, where the other one's rotating on a negative axis. And then the velocity on this will go to 0.5. And I think we'll actually test this. So I'm going to do a save here. Okay. I know it could be used in the function keys, but eh, whatever. Stuck in the old ways. All right. So if we go in here, that was uh, left one vertical. So we go left one vertical. And we unlock it. It's getting some resistance. I'm wondering why. I'll just set the torque all the way up. All right, and let's just do a reverse and see how that works. So, of course, we can obviously give some more movement speed in this. All right, let's get out of here and just see how the leg is. Okay, we could probably go further more. Uh, from vertical, let's uh, reverse it the other way and see how far back it goes. So that's not too bad. So that gives more room in the front. So I could probably bring this up to like a 15 or a 17. And we'll do a 16. So it'll be a 14 degree movement. And then on these ones here in the middle, I'll have uh, plus 7, negative 7. I guess 0 would count too. So that one should be negative 2 to negative 17. Or 2 to 17. And then same here. This would be... 2 on this side, 17 in the back, and then same over there. And then as far as the horizontal ones go, uh, I'm going to leave them at 0 here as their lower limit. And I might bring them up maybe 5 degrees. 5 degrees here won't be much here, but at the end of the foot, it might be enough to get over some of these hills. And that could be adjusted to 7 or more if need be. So I got some configuration to do, and uh, let's actually do a speed test on this. What we'll do is go in here and we'll change this one to 17. And just see how far of movement we can get or how long it takes to get a smooth mo movement. I know this isn't going to move fast because it is a giant spider, a giant mechanical spider. So we'll bring this up to, bring it up to an even one and see how that works. And then same up here. Uh, I have thought about trying to think of a way to actually put the the rotors on the same way, but be, the way I'm trying to join it up here, I don't know if I'd be able to get the proper linkage connections. All right, but anyways, well, let's uh, back out of here, and go down, and we'll, we'll test uh, the range here, if I can get to that control board, control panel. Okay, 
And then we just go ahead and reverse this. It seems about right. I bait more or less want each leg on a four second cycle. So two seconds going forward, two seconds going back. Because everything's going to be on four timers that are spaced a second apart. So that seems pretty good for me. All right. So that's one. I got a whole bunch more to configure. So I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, they are all set up. I have saved, and now only thing left to do is to unlock everything. Now, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I do have a uh, control panel at, at each leg, and that's in case I have to make whatever adjustments. And right now, we're going to go ahead and unlock everything and just see exactly how the spacing is on everything. So we'll go ahead and unlock and release the clang. Just want to make sure the legs don't hit each other. A lot of bounce. Uh, I understand there's a lot of weight on there, but everything does seem to be working. Just bouncing a lot. Uh, let's put a cockpit on here and just see what's really going on. I'm wondering now if it's actually going to be able to push itself up. Where's the cockpit? There's the cockpit. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted that. Okay, let's get out of here and go here. And the reason why I'm doing this is so I can go into third person while I'm actually configuring everything. Go out here and since I have the UI opacity on, I can see. So you can see this leg here is almost touching that. It's uh, uh, left one vertical. So we'll go and reverse that. So we get some good distance on that. Let's try two because I want to see if I'm actually going to hit there. Just hit, so I might have to move that down to like a six degree, possibly. Okay, we'll reverse that. So now I gotta hop out. This one looks a little funny, but I think it's just because it's forward. So I, now I just want to check the timing on it. So I'm going to throw a timer timer block on here, and we're just going to get it to do a two-second loop. Just see how everything works out. Okay, I'll hop in here, like so. And grab our timer block, which is way down at the bottom of this long list. Uh, two-second delay, set up actions, and groups. We'll go with the left one, and we'll reverse that. And then we go back to blocks and then we go here and start. So now, if I go ahead and trigger, so that's not a two second delay. It's not bad. Let's see what the rotation is on that. Uh, So it's not quite enough. So I might have to adjust the speed on these a little bit. So let me try that. Okay, that seems to be working. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that timer block off. And I've got the, the raising and lowering of these set to two, and I might have to go three, but they're not doing that much of uh, an angle, only seven degrees. So let's go in here and uh, let's get rid, of, get rid of that, go here, and then we'll do left one, reverse this one. Go back to blocks, and go here, and then we'll start that. So now, what I have to do is, the way these are all set up, it's basically going to be up and forward, down and back. So now I actually need to see if this is up or down, so it's... Uh, it's It's up apparently. So up, so that's got to go forward. So I'll go in here. And we will go to left one vertical. We reverse that. I think, oh, it's up, so it goes this way. And let's just check this one here quickly. Don't worry, I'll be doing the rest of this off camera. So yeah, they are currently up. 
Alright, so now I should be able to just go ahead and activate the timer block. So yeah, I'm going to have to get a little more speed on the vertical, I think. So let me do some testing and I'll see what I can come up with. Hmm. <laughs> that doesn't seem too safe. That's just one. I'm actually curious to see what's going to happen when I get the rest of this thing going. Uh, yeah, this could be quite something. Well, we'll find out. Okay, I made some adjustments and I also got them all in the time that they're supposed to be. This one up, forward, this one down, back, up, forward, down, back, and reversed on the op opposite side. So now it's to get the, the timer blocks put into place. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out because I don't need that one anymore. And let me see here. Trying to think of how I want to do this. It's going to be. I guess just four timer blocks should do it. So we'll do those two there. Then we'll do two more in the back. Uh, like so. Oh. Like that, yes. Oh, I only need one there. Okay, so this should be a fairly simple. It's just a matter of doing a continuous loop with these things. And so I'm just going to have pair one, pair two, pair three, pair four. Uh, I do have to make sure I get these in order too. So I'm going to name this timer block one, timer block two, timer block three. And timer block four. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to be activating timer blocks. Like timer block one is going to trigger timer block three, I think. Actually, no, it should be in sequence here. All right, so timer block one. I'm trying to let's see. We're going to activate. Let's try it this way. Timer block one, uh, group one, reverse that. Uh, reverse. Okay, and we'll trigger timer block two. Then we go to timer block. Now that of course, all these are going to have a one second delay. Uh, one second delay, and then the actions on timer block two are going to be uh, legs two. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm actually doing this wrong here. So I'm only getting the left side. Yes. Okay, and then we go over here, and we take the right two horizontal, and right two vertical. And then we go over here and we trigger block three and you get the idea. So I have to go back to block one, add those and I'll get all this set up. Okay, so I got some timer blocks in. I don't know if this is gonna be the timing that I want, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start number one and see what happens. Well, this is a clang disaster waiting to happen. Hmm. Me thinks this isn't going to work too well. Also wondering too if I had designed the hinges differently where I had the horizontal on the frame and then the vertical on the leg if that would have been any different. Uh, so let's go ahead and just stop that for now. Uh, just turn that off and that should stop the cycle automatically. I don't know if it's got to do with uh, no weight. So let me do a save and we'll bring it down on the ground. Okay, the save has been done. Now for the damage. I try to get this out before it hits the ground. Oh yes, feel that leg. I can see the legs come by me. I want to make sure that's got enough room. I could do a control X, but I gotta deal with a pop-up window to do with that. Okay, that should be good enough. 
What are you doing? You're still settling down, are you? Oh, and it's going to bounce. It's a problem with low gravity. Alright, let's get this out of here while we wait. Yes. The bigger they are, the harder they fall when there's gravity. That is. Hmm. Someone tells me this isn't going to work. I might have to bring this down to Earth like, maybe. Or even Mars. Somewhere we have a little more gravity. Best thing is I can copy and paste this and just go off somewhere else. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and turn that block back on. That was A. Yes, and let's see what happens. It wants to fly, that's what it wants to do. Yeah, I think we're really relocating to Mars on this one. There's just not enough gravity for this. Uh, I did have an idea of putting uh, artificial mass on the feet, but it doesn't matter how heavy the object is. If the gravity's low, it's going to take forever to go down. So, let's go ahead and copy this. Okay, we'll get that out of here for now, and let us fly to Mars. And where are you? There you are. Go on this side, and... Nice spot right here. Oh, not inside the ground. No. Be a bad idea. Alright. And face plant. Okay. Let's see what happens. Whoa, jeez. That's the wrong button. There we go. That's what I want. Now I'll zoom this out. And let's see if I can place I should blueprint it further up. I think I can actually do that. Go over here and copy it again. Because it's going to... The root part is going to be whatever you're looking at. So if I'm about here... Let's see. Control C. Get that out. Actually, no. We should be doing a Control X. Because we're going to have to take it out anyways. Control X. Yes. And then Control V. We can go back out, and then we can actually get it closer to the ground so it doesn't bounce when I re release the beast, we'll call it. Okay. Now, now we try this again. So far, so good. There's no holes in the ground. The legs are still on, and let's get this out of the way. I don't know if you can hear the music, but I've never heard this track before. Interesting. Alright, uh, get that out. Oh, that's the wrong button. Yes, I know. Tilt and tab always confuse me. Uh, yes, timer block. Alright, let's turn you back on and let's see what happens. Let's get out of here. Get into first person. Yeah, this one is definitely not like the other ones. Wow, this one just wants to bounce all over the place. Uh, bigger isn't always necessarily better. Just too much bouncing them. I know exactly what's causing it too. It's uh this play that's in these hinges or these rotors. Plus, we got a lot of bounce. I've got torque set to max, braking force set to max. There's just too much bounce. That's what's going on. Could slow it down, but I have a feeling that's just not going to happen. But the good thing about this project no clang. So I want to just want to try putting some extra weight on here. I was originally thinking about repurposing that, this as a base. So let me see if I can get in this cockpit and stop this thing. 
and I will try to put uh, some amenities on here, try to weigh it down a little bit, and go from there. Well, unfortunately, I'm not having the best of luck with this. I tried replacing one of the wheels with an artificial mass. Uh, it's set for 50 tons, but apparently it's not enough, and I don't know how to actually configure those things. I tried, and it might have to be in the custom data sort of deal, but sadly, this project did not work out the way I had hoped. Uh, I know I'm dealing with game mechanics and code physics and whatnot, so I have a 300-ton jumping spider. But hey. It's a video game, right? Gotta try, but at least I don't have holes in the ground. But at least I learned a few things, and, uh, you know, it's Walker idea on, under this type of power may not be entirely feasible. Yes, I have done it with some smaller stuff, but those are small scale. And I don't know how heavy this thing is. Let's actually see if we can get in here. Get our old info menu up, and we are currently about a thousand tons. So it's not not the lightest thing in the world, but it should be at least heavy enough to keep itself down on the ground, even at point nine gravity. And I think that's what's going on. Is I got too much vibration going on with these these rotors. There's too much bounce in them. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot I can do, and it's got nothing to do with the mass, because the one with the artificial mass, which is the front left one here, doesn't seem to have any more issue than the one behind it. But anyways, uh, I was going to scrap this video, but I figured, why not? My failure is always your enjoyment, right? But at least it worked. It's not a clang incident, but I had to give it another shot. But I do have other projects, projects I want to get working on, uh, some some funner things, and I want to try to get the community involved a little bit more. But with that, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs>